Father God, thank you for this day and this opportunity. Use your servant on this morning to bless these your people, dear God. Lord, I pray right now that you would use me, dear God, and allow me to only say and do exactly what you want me to say and do, and nothing more and nothing less. We thank you, praise you, and love you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you will, turn your Bibles, amen, to Joshua. Amen. Chapter 24, verse 1. Amen. Pastor, you read that last Sunday. I know. Amen. Get used to it. Amen. Joshua, chapter 24, verse number 1. Joshua, chapter 24, verse number 1. Look what the word says. It says, Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, for their judges, for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue our series. Amen. And we're going to look at the last attribute. Amen. As it relates to being an effective, godly, effective, godly leader. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Today we're going to use a passage of scripture that's very familiar. Um, we're going to go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And uh, we'll look at verses 42 through 45. And it's my prayer, amen, that uh, as Pastor shares and he shares, that you realize that God really doesn't want you to just hear a word on Sunday. He really wants you to take that word, go back home, study, and really allow yourself what to apply that word to your life. Um, there's a travesty in the church. There's a travesty to where really and truthfully, people sitting in the pews try to assume why the pastor's doing what he's doing, right? And so what happens is the word doesn't have much effect because they'll say, oh, he's throwing at this one, he's throwing at that one, he's throwing at the other, when in actuality, the word is for all of us, right? And so what we've got to do, we can't let the devil have his way and getting us to really thinking, oh, this is why he's doing this. you got to understand, as the church, if our leaders are not right, if we don't realize that as leaders that we affect everything that happens, then really and truthfully, the church will never be what it, what God designed it to be. So we've got to make sure we understand that this study, this series is not just for St. Mary. I can go up the road, amen, and teach and preach the same thing and will apply to that same four walls. Why? Because the word is the word. The word is for all of us. Right? And so what we do sometimes, we don't allow the word to really be what it needs to be to our life. It's kind of like when it talks about the, the, the uh, parable of the seed and the soul, right? When, 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 when the seed was sown, what, the birds came in and took it away, right? And so you've got to understand the devil's tricky. The devil will do things to try to stop you from receiving what God wants for your life. Right? It's kind of like your child. That's why your child does that sometimes. They know you're right. They know you're telling them something that's going to benefit them. They know you're telling them right from wrong, but they'll do the exact, exact opposite just to show you I'm not going to do what you told me. It's the same thing. Right? It's the exact same thing. So we've got to allow the word to be what it is. So we're going to take a look at this passage of scripture. I'll read it and then we're going to look at that last attribute. Right? But Jesus called them, that's Mark 10, 42 and 45. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord over them, and that great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever you, uh, of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. If you're a leader, I don't care what your title is. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care where your foot has tread. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you think you are, what you think you know. If you are a leader for God, you better understand that you are a servant. Right? You got to understand that. Right? Being an effective leader for God says this, that I'm not coming for everybody to just do stuff for me. I came to serve. Now, mind you, there are times when, as a leader, there's some decisions you need to make, some things you need to do. 
Why? Because God has given you the direction you need to go in. But at the same time, as we go along, you've got to understand that a good leader understands that they have to meet the needs of those that need it. It ain't just my way or the highway. Can I help you? Parents? Right? We can learn a lesson from this. Right? Is, is it my goal and objective just to tell them what I'm going to tell them? You're going to do what I tell you because I say it? Or they, you're going to get them to understand that what you're telling them is beneficial to them? Because at the end of the day, you're serving to them to help them to understand and to grow and to be better. Many of us, me and a guy was talking last week, there are many grown adults who've been traumatized as children. And parents did it. Oh, Jesus. Parents did it. Right? Because in the parents' mind, I'm doing the right thing because they're going to do what I say. Well, it ain't just because they're going to do what you say. What kind of child you want to end up with? What kind of child you gonna have where they can't even make their own decision? And they waiting on you to make a decision. So they grown and gone out the house, can't do nothing for themselves because you tell them everything they gotta do. Oh Jesus. But what you got to understand that you are what you're serving. I don't care what position you have. You're serving. Right? Here we go. Let's take a look at it. Look what it says. It says, but Jesus called them to himself and said that to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles law over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. He's talking to the Jews, right? He's talking to the Jews, right? He said, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles law over them. So, He's talking to Jews, talking about Gentiles, which are non-Jews. And he's saying, you know what the Gentiles do? They lord over those that they are over. Right? They're like tyrants. Right? They tell them what to do. Right? Do as I say or whatever. Or if you don't do what I say, you got to go. Right? Jesus said, don't let that be amongst you. Right? Don't let that be amongst you. Right? Now, mind you, just previously, James and John had actual uh, a seat on the right and the left of Jesus uh, uh, in the kingdom. Right? So you're dealing with this right now. Right? Because why? They thought they positioned. Uh oh. Right? What did it say? Right? Whatever they got on made them great. So Jesus did a level on what? Uh, a lesson on what? Greatness. Right? So he says, don't let this be amongst, amongst you. Don't you allow yourself to get to the point to where you think leadership is just being big boss man or big boss girl. Right? And forget you need the people you actually need. Oh, Jesus. Right? Because you'll lose what? You'll be taking, like that old preacher say, uh, anybody who say they need Amen. And they walking along and they turning on and ain't nobody following them. They just taking a walk. <laughs> you be taking a walk. Right? So you got to consider those. You got to consider those who you what? Who you lead. Look what you got to understand. This is the first thing I want you to get. Your leadership should never cause you to abuse people with the power you have been given. Now watch, check this out. We're living in a world where if you as a leader hold people accountable, they'll call you a bully. Amen. Holding people accountable is not abuse. If you're supposed to be doing one thing and you're doing something else and I call you out on it, that ain't bullying. That's saying do your doggone job. So let's not get abuse twisted. Some people, y'all, they so sensitive, you can't tell them nothing. Any little thing you tell them, they take a feel, oh, y'all, we got to build some tough skin. 
when, when, when we are part of something, can I help you? You know what I had to learn, Brother Dennis? I learned something about, about the military. I never was in the military, but I learned something about the military. The military really helps you to understand this one thing. You're going to have a leader. You need a leader. You're going to follow that leader because that leader got the direction you need to go in. You're going to follow what he says because he's going to tell you where to go. If you do what you want to do and say that I'm not going to do what he says because I'm going to do my own thing, you're going to get everybody killed. Not until I realized that I understood. It's not about the person who's the actual leader. It's about order so that everybody's going in the same direction doing the exact same thing. So you don't have chaos what and come. That's all. Right? But holding people accountable is not abuse. But when you don't consider the people that you're leading, and you just say, do what I want, don't care about them, and this, that, and whatever, I don't care about them, whatever that happened to them, what happened to them, I don't care, whatever, they can go jump off a bridge. Shame on you, and you are dealing with some issues. You're dealing with something, right? So it's not about just saying, because what? Because I'm in control. Right? Here we go. Yet, it shall not be amongst you, but whoever desires to be great amongst you shall be your servant. How many of you remember the passage where Jesus washed the disciples' feet? How many of you know Jesus didn't have to wash their feet? How many of you know it was me? I'd have thought twice about washing somebody's feet. He didn't wash their feet because he had to. He was giving them a demonstration. You got to go that low sometimes. Amen. What the, and then sometimes, now, think, now you think about it, let's be honest, be real. You think about some people's feet. <laughs> like, ooh, I need the grace of God for this one right here. Amen. Right? But Jesus washed their feet to show them what? To show them, guess what? You got to be low. You've got to, you, you've got to what? Humble yourself. Right? You can't be so high and lifted up that you don't care about other people and what goes on with them. Right? He's letting them know that guess what? You will be a servant if you really want to be great. You really, 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 really want to be great. Right. Next thing I want you to consider is this. Great leadership requires one to consider the needs of the people that they lead. Everybody in here is different. You know what gets us in trouble? If I got a way of looking at things, seeing things, approaching things, or whatever, if Sister Beverly don't think like I think, I throw her away. That's what messes us up. Amen. Now watch. Here's the thing. Her way is not wrong, it's just her way. Right. But guess what? All that, I don't know about all that. No, that's how she sees it. That's what makes the world the way it is. One person sees it one way, the next person sees it. And you know what God had to show me? In a particular moment and portion and season of time, Brother Dennis's way is the way that will be most effective at that time. Move forward. What Brother Dennis did before, it may not be what's for that time. It's going to accomplish the same thing. Sister Michelle might have something totally different, another way of doing it. And guess what? It's for that season, that moment, and that time. Same thing is accomplished. Same thing is done. It just was done differently. Right? So that's what gets us in trouble sometimes. We don't appreciate one another. Don't go through life not appreciating people. If people don't think like you, do what you do, guess what that makes them? Not you. That's what that makes up. Right? And that's what makes the world go around. Right? All of our differences. Jesus. Right? But those who be great amongst you will be your what? 
the servant will be able to yield to people and understand what people are going through. Be patient with people. Be kind to people. And I just got to say it, right? Even as a leader myself, it's hard being kind, being patient sometimes with some people. But guess what God told me? It comes with the territory. Right? You know they're being difficult? You know, really and truthfully, they're that close from just being called flat out crazy. That close. God said, be patient with them. God said, love them. God said, do what you can to understand what they're going through and how they feel. That ain't easy all the time. But you know what the Bible tells you? Yet it shall not be among you, but whoever desires to be great among you shall be your servant. Could you imagine Christ walking around and healing people? Knowing what people are dealing with, dealing with all those issues, and everybody's different, and this one want this, and this one want that, and all this other stuff. And yet he took time to meet their individual needs. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. But that's what, that's the mark of a great leader. Or watch. Right? A great leader, right? A great leader is a servant. Right? So great leadership requires one to consider the needs of the people that they need. Here we go. It says and whosoever of you desires to be first, what? Well, first should be a slave of all. Amen. Wait, first. You know what that word first means? It just means great above the rest. It means on top of, it means top of the line, it means the MVP. So it says this, if you desire to be the MVP, you're gonna be a slave of all. That's that don't even make good sense. I know. In the natural. Right? But really and truthfully, if you're serving God. He'll help you chime in on what it means. Right? A slave of all. You consider everyone involved. Right? You want to be great. Right? You want to be top of the line. You got to understand that you're going to have to bow down first. Right? You have to get down, right? Put your pride to the side so that now you can be great in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of what God, not in the eyes of man. Right? That's not easy because you know why? There's, there's a three letter word called ego. Right? Ego. Right? All of us struggle with that. I don't care who you are. I don't care how nice you try to make people thank you all. All of us struggle with it. Everybody. Ego. Right? But you got to understand, the Lord says, in order for you to do it his way, you got to get your ego in check. What does ego cause you to do sometimes? Look down on other people. Really believe that you're okay and they're not. That's what ego causes you to do. Right? Or just kind of put your own self on top of the world. Um, the Bible talks about the Pharisees and Sadducees a lot. And there was a group of people, really truthfully, um, they were considered self-righteous. Right? And so what happened with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they really truthfully tried to make themselves be all of this and all of that and people had to answer to them and all this other stuff and they got it twisted because they didn't realize that God didn't call them to be the religious cops. He called them to help people. Wow. Right? 
So we've got to understand that in order for us to be first, we really have to be what? Compassionate. Right? We really got to be compassionate. Right? Be careful when you get to the point to where it's like you really don't care what happens to somebody. You're in a dangerous place. Amen. That's dangerous. That says that you have no heart. Right? Okay, Pastor, what do you want me to get from this? This is what I want you to get. Leadership God's way causes one to step down before, before they are brought up. You'll step down before you're brought up. Now watch. I'm not talking about by man. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. I'm talking about a God to what elevates you. Because remember that he started to his disciples that wanted a seat on each side in glory. So he's not talking about uh, amen, you know, you getting that plaque, you getting that reward, you getting your name on the wall, you getting your name on the marquee. That's not what he's talking about. So don't get that twisted. And I believe us as preachers and pastors, we got to be careful of that because we can start teaching people to try to, you know, grab that worldly stuff and call that success in God's eyes when it's really not. God says, in order for you to be great in my kingdom, right, so that he can what? Reward you. God showed me this a long time ago. You just do right. And what he does is, at the right time, he'll elevate you. And what's going to happen, he'll do it so much later. And at such a different time, you ain't going to know why. And the people around you ain't going to know why. But you just keep on doing. You just keep on doing what God called you to do. And let God have the rest of his life. Right? But leadership, God's way, causes one to step down before they are what? You got to step down, right? Before you are brought up by God. Look what it says. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Wow. Now hold up. Jesus, 100% man and 100% God. God in the flesh. God, Jesus came to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. I'm going to ask this question. Now, this is called a rhetorical question. So that means you ain't got to give the answer. Amen. What would you do if God told you to live the rest of your life homeless and preach on the roadside? Something to think about. Remember when they, when they came to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, really? He said, that's what I did to Jesus. Most folks say they want to be like Jesus. They lie. Jesus was a serpent. Birds have nests and foxes have holes, but the Son of Man trying to build a big house. And look what God has done. What if God say you're going to be homeless and you're going to preach your side of the world? Would you serve him then? Like, Lord, don't do that to me. <laughs> but that's something to think about. Right? That's what Jesus did. That was his life. Right? You talk about you ain't about that life you ain't about that Jesus life. You ain't. No, you ain't. Oh, Jesus, he 
you're going to follow Jesus and, you know, he's going to go with God all the way, you know. <laughs> you know, he, 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 yeah, he, he was like, yeah, I'm, I got this, I got this. Well, <laughs> look what it up at. This is what he said. He said, good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. He said all these things I have kept from my youth. He said, I'm good. <laughs> God, check. You know we like checking boxes. Check. I did all that right. Jesus hit him with a whammy. Thank you. So then Jesus heard all these things. He said to him, you still lack one thing. Right? He said, you still lack one thing. Okay, look what he said. He says this. He says, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. <laughs> the Bible says he was sorrowful. And there was no, nothing documented that he did what Jesus told him to do. So that lets you know he might have hung his head in sorrow at the moment, but he went back to doing what he was doing. Amen. Pastor, why you told me that? Because you got to understand that doing it God's way says that you're willing to put really your own personal agenda aside and rearrange your life to serve God. What? Yes. To do it God's way and to say that you're a servant to do it the way God wants you to do it is to rearrange your life so that you can serve God and ultimately serve God's people. Now, you got to understand, most preachers and teachers ain't going to teach you that in 2022. I'm not boosting myself up. I'm just saying where the world is going right now. Because most will tell you that you're doing good if the bank account is right. You're doing good if your health is right. Can I help you? That's a slap in God's face. So if that's the case, what was wrong with the disciples, the apostles, and those that served Jesus in the word of God? It says this. 
It says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Watch it. And to give his life a ransom for many. Pastor, what do you want me to get out of that? This is what I want you to understand. Godly leadership calls for sacrifice. Sacrifice. Could be time. Could be finance. Could be time with your family. Sacrifice. Why? Because I know what God has called me to do and I know what he wants me to do and I'm going to do it because that's what I know he wants me to do. It calls for sacrifice. See, being a godly leader is being able to know the task at hand and being able to stay the course with what God wants you to do even when there's resistance or even when those you're leading don't even understand why you're doing what you're doing. But also to be at a point to say this, that I'm willing to do what I can to get it done no matter what it takes. Even if it's going to cause me some aches and pains. All right. I know, I know a lot of, a lot of men of God that deal with a lot of things. Right? And Many of them, a lot of them deal what they deal with. You know why? Because they actually believe that scripture. Okay, preacher, so why are you, why are you telling me that? I'm telling you that only because of this. It's that when you really serve God and know God and know what he put you here to do, can I help you? You do all you can to get it done no matter what. And sometimes, sometimes you run the risk of losing some things to gain other things. Right? But at the same time, God says, you have to be a servant of all. Jesus gave himself a life, his life on a ransom, a ransom for many. So as leaders in the church and in the body of Christ, we got to understand sacrifice. Do you realize that we're living in a world where everybody wants everything convenient? Nobody's committed. Right? And fool around, you know, somebody feeling some kind of way, you sure enough ain't going to get no commitment. But being committed and sacrificing says this. It doesn't matter how I feel. I know what God wants to do. Right? That's why you hear the old church say things like, things I used to do, I don't do no more. Places I used to go, I don't go no more. People who I used to hang with, I don't hang with no more. Please. Pastor, why is that so important? You're willing to put aside some things, sacrifice some things to do what's really important. You're even willing to put aside your own personal preference to do what does say in the Lord. If God said, that's it. You know what we allow to do? And especially in this world, we allow the things that we think and feel to guide us. Right? And we won't even sacrifice our own preference. We won't even do that. And we'll throw the word clean to the side. We won't even do that. No, it's, it, it's about saying, Lord, I forsake all to follow you. 
Now, that's not a license to mistreat folk, throw people out of your life. I ain't no, that ain't, that ain't what I'm talking about. All I'm saying is this. When you know the task at hand and you know what God has called you to do, ain't nothing that nobody going to stop you from doing it. That's what that means. Right? And you care more about others. Right? And the call that God has for you over you. That's what Jesus showed me. Right? So we ought to what? We ought to sacrifice. And all the say that we're real true leaders, we ought to, we ought to, we ought to really sacrifice. Right? And give God, give God what he really deserves. Why? Because all of us got to bear our own cross. Some folk don't want a bad cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. They just want to see what, you know, what they can get out of it. But if, if all I want is something from God and I'm not willing to serve God, do I really worship him? Do I really worship him? Right? So we should be willing to want to sacrifice. Right? Because Jesus came not to what? Be served. But to serve. So in looking at the attributes that we talked about, my prayer is that we all begin to take a look at what the word says about doing it God's way. Right? I thank God because I realize that we're in a moment in a season where this is vital, it's important, I need it, you need it, we all need it, and guess what? God is working on us to get us to a point to where he's going to use us in a way that none of us could have ever imagined. But all, all I want you to do is this, when God does what he does with us, don't you dare open up your lips, your mouth, to say it like you did it, like I did it. Like any one of us did. You let them know. It was nothing but the grace of God. Who did what he did with us. So my prayer is as we go along. That God would minister to us. That he would grow us. That he would wake us. That he would shake us. Help us to get up out our feelings. Do it his way. Read his word. Pray. Get on our knees. Do what we have to do. Understand our influence. Understand that we impact everybody around us. Understand that we play a part in everything that goes on. And that we begin to do it God's way. And we get out the way. Praise Jesus. That's all. But in this season and in this time. You've got to understand, God is doing something. Hear me and hear me well, and I'm going to let us go. God is going to raise up leaders in St. Mary. And God is going to raise up teachers in St. Mary. Just you wait and see. And some of them may not be the ones you thought. Why? Can I help you? Sister Kai can vouch for this. Sister Amber can vouch for this. Brother Jarrell can vouch for this. We talked about it last week. In 2022, we can't do it like we did it in 1950. So we've got to understand that God is up to something. But guess what? Guess what ain't gonna change? His word. His word ain't gonna change. His word changes not. But at the same time, we're in a season and a time, people of God, where guess what? It ain't about you just getting dressed up and coming to church looking pretty. 
or looking and, and being the, the church cop and stopping folk at the door because they ain't got the right stuff on. Them days is over. It's about people. It's about the heart. It's about the soul. It's about winning souls to Christ. It's about discipling people when they decide to follow Christ. But watch what God is going to do. For some, he's going to allow it to happen right before your eyes. And there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Nothing. You know why? Because God's will will be done. It will be done. And my only prayer is this. Is that all of us understand our part as leaders in the church. Those who are older as leaders in the church. Those who are saved as leaders in the church. Those who are parents as leaders in the church. And understand that there is a way that might have been done or that seemed right. But we got to make sure we do it the way God wants us to. And let the truth be the truth. My prayer is that we all look in the mirror. Check your heart. Check your heart. And ask yourself, Am I a servant or is it about me? Am I a servant or is it about what I want or don't want? Am I a servant or is it my way or the highway? I want you to ask yourself that. And once you do that and you can be okay with God, then guess what? I promise you everything, everything will be all right. So as children of God, you've got to understand the way up is down. It's down. The way up is down. Ain't saying your value decreases. No. Not that. Just that your perspective changes. If your perspective perspective never changes as a child of God, then you've got to question some things. Why? Because you've got to understand. It says, do not be conformed to this world. Be by the renewing of your mind. If your perspective doesn't change as a child of God, something's wrong. If God's word don't mean nothing, then something's wrong. Right? So we've got to make sure we understand that we're a servants of God and we are to do it God's way. So, thus ended the portion on attributes. God willing, God willing, we'll continue and we'll deal with, we'll deal with the requirements of an effective leader. Starting on next week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen.